Big Ticket Morning Show on V103, the ATL's number one for hip-hop, R&B, and throwbacks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have the honor and privilege of uh, sitting in front of Lakeith Stanfield and James Samuel, uh, mostly responsible for the Book of Clarence in theaters January 14th. How are you, gentlemen? Peace, good. Peace man. to the God. Good Jan- to see you both. January 12th, but, you know. Oh, 12th, excuse me. Let me I get my life to, together. I need to correct Big Ticket, you know what I mean? Listen, everybody, listen, players mess up too, bro. <laughs> Clarence messed up the whole movie until he got it right. Yeah. Um, it's to my understanding a lot of religious people are not happy with this situation. No, I, you know, I don't think um, religious people aren't happy. I think when the teaser dropped, and it's an amazing teaser. Absolutely. It, it, it's just that. It's a teaser. So it tells you, it just shows the story of a of a sinner. So people would just be up in arms at the visuals they're seeing. When you look at the movie, it's not blasphemous at all. And, you know, the conversation is good. We need that conversation. So is this movie just artistic expression or was it designed to be a conversation or dialogue starter? Both, right? Mm. The best art, the best art is dialogue starters. Best uh, the albums we grew up listening to, from Ready to Die, Mob Deep to Infamous, dialogue starters, but they're also, you know, artistic artistic expression, you know what I mean? This 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 uh, film is the physical personification of Shook ones. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I think um, we live in an age where immediate gratification and understanding is what people are used to. Seeing something at face value and being like, that's exactly what it is. I know what it is. I got the answer. Right. Instead of waiting till we get context to further understand it. This is one of the ones you really have to go see it because you, you think you know what it is. And the trailer, it, it, it might give you little tidbits. Mm-hmm. But once you sit down and watch it, you realize it's much more vast than you would have thought. I mean, I left this movie truly feeling inspired, and I don't know anyone who's seen it who hasn't. So I would encourage people who have questions, just go see it. Go give it a chance, because it's definitely not what meets the eye. Yeah, the, tra- the trailer definitely gave me a different depiction of what I watched, uh, and I enjoyed uh, all of it. Uh, I think book three is going to be hard for some people. Absolutely. <laughs> book, Absolutely. Book three is going to be a little challenging for people, but... Um, We're not going to give much away, but... Book three is challenging for people because our lives are challenging. You mm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wish that didn't happen. I wish I wish we didn't have to put a book three in there. I wish you, me, Lakeith, everyone else didn't go through a book three. But right. we go through book three. We definitely do. Just on our way to work. You know what I mean? Could, could we have stirred the pot a little bit even more if we dropped this Christmas weekend? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I wanted to, you know, you know. <laughs> You know how the black gods do? I wanted to drop this joint on Christmas Day. Oh man! You know what I mean? But but uh, but you know, it's just a movie that everyone everyone should see. I believe I believe it's a cel- it's also a celebration of original storytelling and cinema. You know, it's it's one of those. Yeah, and for clarification for people, it's more story that centers on uh, this guy named Clarence who lived perhaps down the street. From Jesus, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he was juxtaposed in a time where Jesus walked. But it isn't a story about Jesus or about religion per se. It's actually just a story about a guy who is he wants to be somebody. He wants to, you know, change his circumstances, bring his family up, bring him forward. It just takes place in the backdrop of biblical times where we typically don't see people with dark skin. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, if you look at some of the descriptions of people at the time, people with dark skin were there. <laughs> and you know what I mean? So we <laughs> wanted to really show this, highlight this, have fun doing it. It's a fun funny movie but it's also really grounded and has some real important things to talk about and some touching emotional moments i mean there's there's something in this movie for everybody mm, there's absolutely. action there's laughter there's tears there's everything and and it really is on the cusp of, of something new and james has brought forth a fresh take um on, on a time we don't see black people in typically and I like the way that you poked fun at those less melanated people <laughs> throughout the movie. <laughs> well, you know, we just we just shine a light. I just I just you know what me myself and and, and Lakeith was doing. We weren't really passing like social commentary. We were just putting a spotlight on things. Like you know, listen, it was fun growing up. <laughs> gr- growing up, I had I had those those white Jesus um, images all over all over my house. The one in my living room was three D. Right. I don't even know why you, you show <laughs> cruci- Jesus crucified in 3D. So every time you walk, you go to the kitchen, the 3D thing is just moving. It's like a scary, a scary picture. And if you touched it, you'll get scolded. So, so I wanted to also shine a light on um on the imagery. But as Lakeith said, it's not about the film is not about Jesus at all. It's about a man that lives in that in that surroundings, as millions of people did, billions of people um, yeah. lived in that time. time so I, admittedly, not completely a heathen, my Bible game wasn't so strong, so there were certain things 
I had to go Google about now yeah. and, and find out some of the how we got to the references and things of that nature. But uh, again, uh, visually stunning. Thank you, bro. Visually stunning. I was really a, a fan of that. And I saw a a clip of you where you explained how you were a fan of the old big movies. Yeah. Like Ben Hur and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. And when I I didn't quite connect the dots until I found out you did uh, Harder They Fall. Yeah. Also very big. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is that your thing now? You, you know what, what it is like? You know, one, I was born big. You know what I mean? <laughs> I always say close your eyes and dream big like Faith Evans. All right. But, but here's the thing. Like, just growing up, all of us were watching Ben-Hur, The Ten Commandments. You know, our parents would just have those joints on, and I love those. I love those movies. But while the stories are familiar, and we all know the, the stories that we that we grew up with, you know, the the imagery that, that, that they'll portray, the visuals aren't aren't really uh, uh, familiar. Like the people in those in those movies, they didn't look like us. Furthermore, I don't know any white person that looks like Charlton Heston. You can't relate <laughs> to. You know, I mean, Kirk Douglas, Charlton Heston, Victor Mature, and all of those people in those in those movies. Mm. But I can relate to Lakeith Stanfield. You see his eyes from the opening frame, and he just brings you with him. You're just there on a journey. So I just think that we deserve to have um, a movie that depicts an environment that we're all familiar with. White people and black people. You'll be familiar with this environment. No one is familiar with Yul Brynner playing an Egyptian, <laughs> playing an Egyptian pharaoh, saying, right. so it was written, so let it be done. No one is familiar with that tish. Yul Brynner looks like a G, but really, brothers and sisters, like, come on, man. I have the honor and privilege of checking out The Book of Clarence, which is in theaters January 12th. Hanging out with me this morning, James Samuel uh, and Lakeith Stanfield. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it yesterday. Uh, I want to ask you your favorite scene. Mm, I would say... My favorite scenes are because so many of them are so good. I mean, it's really one of them movies where from start to finish, there's something happening mm -hmm. that's going to keep your attention and keep grabbing you. And I think really uh, what stands out to me is, you know, Clarence goes on this journey of self-discovery and he kind of realizes and is seated in his knowledge in a sequence where he's in prison um, uh, for, for sort of speaking out loud during the time people were persecuted for speaking the truth. And he spends time in a cell for a while and he starts to realize and come to knowledge of self and knowledge of where he is in the universe and what that might mean and just a real uh, special, powerful moment and a turning point for Clarence. And to me, that's that's one of my favorite parts. James? Yeah. I think there's so many, man. And yeah, there also, are. There's a bunch of good moments. Also, you know, the way that, that um, Lakeith plays Clarence and, and, you know, and his twin brother. Oh, yeah, I was definitely going like, to get to that. It's actually crazy. <laughs> I, just, I was watching it yesterday. How did, did he do that? I don't, I don't I don't get there's so many favorite parts but also the swag of clan whatever era we have been in in the history of mankind black people we've always been swagged out you take every single thing away from us we're still us <laughs> and the swag of, I, I, maybe if if I chose a favorite scene today it'll be when you enter the gladiator arena oh, like yeah yeah that like was a good one. like yeah. like out of all when they're in the kind of, let's call it the dance interior. Oh, you're not, <laughs> you're, you're not impressed? <laughs> like, the tissue is so, it don't, 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 don't. It's just so hard. No, no, no. So that is my absolute favorite moment. Choreographed by Fatima Robinson. Oh, let's, let's just A, because of the song. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's been a song of mine. Exactly. Let's not give it away. Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not even give it when away. When the song but dropped, I was like, exactly. oh, this makes so much sense. And you see how, you see how we've never analyzed the song before. But now there is a visual forever tied that to that song. You will never hear that song and not think of the visual again. And yeah. also, Tigger, we deserve, this is a movie in 135 years of the moving image. We have never seen us in the Bible days. Why? Mm. It describes us all through that book. Mm -hmm. Why have we never seen it? We deserve this movie. Yeah, like like kids, your children, my children, the key children. Absolutely. We deserve to, to see a movie that reflects us 2,000 years ago. You know what I mean? Listen, you it, again, you need we to see We deserve to see a movie that reflects us as cowboys. We deserve to see us in this in this imagery. Period pieces for us doesn't mean slave porn. Mm. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you have to call us N-words 110 times in a two-hour space. Like, we deserve to see us in these in these, um, in these these images. We're powerful people um, then. We're powerful people now. Like, we, we, we deserve it. Anyway, um, I don't want to get so so no 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 that, so rag all this early in the morning. Necessary. We love the passion, and it it really I mean there's so much passion in this film from everybody involved that we felt 
not only that we were making and telling a story that we could be proud of, but this was a moment. This was like a moment in history. This is this is it's the representation is important and to have us, you know, take the stage in places where we're typically not seen. You know, history get written by the people who win, mm-hmm. you know, and we're in a very beautiful position to be able to retell that history in a way through our lens and our way. Absolutely. You know, people will say the music seems too modern to put next to, uh, you know, a, a story that's juxtaposed to biblical stories. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if you think about the music like Bach and, and, and classical music that's typically uh, put next to this stuff, that's also too modern. Yeah. People back in them days wasn't listening to classical <laughs> music. He's right. listening so, to Mozart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's our interpretation. It, it's a beautiful opportunity and it takes a lot of bravery and to put yourself up at the forefront like James James has done as we've done to be able to do something like this and it should serve as a bastion of hope and inspiration for other people you too can tell your own story all y'all can start telling your own story because we we have told ours now Mm -hmm. so I would say you got to support movies like this get out there go see it bring your family because that's what's going to allow us to continue to make more movies like this where we're being prominently featured in positive light exactly amen amen uh January 12th book of Clarence now, Lakeith, you touched on a couple of things I need to come circle back around to. You've been able to uh, bring these amazingly complex characters to life. Mm. And, and like one after another after another. Is that your thing now? Like, is that what you look for in a character when, you, when you're being cast? Because not only are you, Clarence has his whole set of things, but his twin has yeah. his whole set of things. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, I, I often find that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of nuance and simplicity. So actually trying to take things down and break them down uh, to the bare bones is where I sort of operate from. And then from there, from the general, you get down into the specific. So, you know, I kind of take a, like a more polarized approach uh, to, to breaking down the characters. But this one was particular because I had to play two different <laughs> characters uh, who uh, were, were brothers. And um, so I wanted to find the nuances in them. And that was a real fresh and fun experience to be able to do. Uh, acting with your cell phone camera is a trip. So uh, it, it was quite fun. Um, okay. So an amazing cast. I mean, David Oyelowo, uh, R.J. Seiler, Tiana Taylor, Mary Magdalene. Uh, my brother uh, who played Jebediah was amazing. Like, yeah. this is, what was it like working with this ensemble? Oh, it was amazing. I mean... We truly couldn't have asked for a better group, uh, starting with, you know, James, who would often uh, lead the lead the dance trains that we had on set. <laughs> um, it, only on a James Samuel set are you going to constantly be hearing music, right. constantly be dancing, constantly have a, an environment that feels like, you know, we here, we're having fun, and we come to do something important. It was really dope, and all the artists involved were really dedicated to their specific roles and parts. I feel like I had a real team. Uh, Spearhead in this movie was made simple by the professionalism, by the love. We were in Matera. We shot in Italy, and uh, nice. one of the, it's like a real old city. Mm-hmm. So it's just all just stone, Stasis. It's just all. So you feel like you're actually in Jerusalem. We had, you know, camels, horses, you know, everybody's wearing robes. Right. It just really felt like biblical chocolate. It was amazing. <laughs> That's what we saying all the time. Me and the key, like biblical chocolate. Biblical, <laughs> biblical chocolate. That is the, the perfect two words that describe this fully, movie. Fully, and everyone in it, just biblical chocolate. Yeah, Listen, natural, a- beautiful hair, just like beautiful skin, the rays of the sun bouncing off it. Nice. It felt like a dream, really. I was yeah. like, damn, if you're going to be on a set, yeah, you want to be on a set like like this that makes you feel like this. It made me feel proud. Mm-hmm. And this film makes me feel proud to be black, to be in cinema, to be telling stories, yeah. to be shedding light on black love. At the center. It's just, it's dope. Yeah. Uh, again, visually stunning. The the soundtrack is going to be crazy. Who scored crazy. the movie? Because I know Jay's, Jay-Z is one of the producers, but who, like, put the music with the scenes? I, compo- I composed the whole score. And I wrote, man. Produced, I wrote, man. produced... And performed every song on the soundtrack. Like the Harder They Fall, I composed a score for this for the Harder They Fall. I wrote and produced. If someone's not rapping on the soundtrack, <laughs> even <laughs> even on the Lauren Hill joints, if someone's not rapping, I wrote and produced and performed Amen. all of the songs. So, but with, with like, and then I got like the illest featured uh, Hove, right. uh, uh, George Benjor. He sings Oh Adiabo, mm-hmm. Wheezy. I brought back Shabba, Would you? I put Lil Wayne, Would you, and Shabba on the same track That's hallelujah amazing. heaven like so the whole you know just the way that our brain works as as um as creative when we used to do rap city then you'll be rhyming with the with the like just the way our brain works as creatives what happens is the older we get 
the more we're taught to level down, right? Mm. Not level up, we're taught to level down, right? We're taught to put limits on stuff. Okay, you can't think that big. You can't think that big. Man, don't let anybody seal in your destinations with their own limitations. Like, Amen. I swag out. Like, when I have an idea, it's every single corners of the of the blank page I explore, from sound to visuals to ev- everything. And no one can tell me what... Um, what I can't do. I want Shabaranks on the on the soundtrack on <laughs> no Hallelujah doubt. on the same track as Lil Wayne. I want Jay Z on the same track as Oh, you gonna see? Like, yeah, don't, don't that soundtrack it. is don't that soundtrack is murderous. That's amazing. It's murderous. January twelfth. Please do yourself and your family a favor. Go check out the Book of Clarence in theaters. Uh, Lakeith and James, thank you for your time this morning. Thank, thank you. you for this amazing cinematic experience. Thank you. Again, I, I'm, I'm I'm very particular these days because I, while I'm happy that we have voices and opportunities and lanes, I, I'm also big that I want the quality to be there. Exactly. Visually as well as what thematically, exactly. and y'all brought that. Exactly. Y'all brought that. Thank so you, I appreciate brother. you, thank and you. thank you very much. Book of Clarence in Theaters, January 12th. Please support my brother James Samuel and Lakeith Stanfield. Lakeith, you got anything else bubbling? I got music coming soon. Wait a so second, sir. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on my first EP coming out. Uh, next year, early next year. What kind of music you doing? All kinds. I mean, anything you can imagine. Ain't no limits on. Ain't no ceilings. Exactly. We just talked about the ceilings. <laughs> yeah. Ain't yeah. no ceilings. Okay? Ain't no ceilings. We'll be on the lookout for it. Y'all go see the movie January twelfth. Thank y'all for stopping by this morning. Yeah. Thank uh, you, King. We'll be, be back with uh, more Big Ticket Morning Show right after this on V one hundred and three.